15th of September 2015. Three years ago on this day, a relatively small indie game called Undertale was released by Toby Fox, known for his earlier Earthbound ROM hacks on the PC. Now, originally I had no idea this game even existed. It was only until I began to watch Jack Jacksepticeye's first video on the game in mid-December of 2015, and initially I found the game quite uninteresting, likely due to its unfamiliar artistic style. I had not been brought up in the decades of video games Undertale is so reminiscent of, and thus that aspect of the appeal was lost on me. And so, I decided not to watch the following videos, and went on with my life. Around mid-2016, I had been talking to someone I knew who was thoroughly engrossed in the game, talking about it whenever they had the chance, and I, not wanting to seem awkward, used what little knowledge of the game I had to humour them. Though after a while, the concepts they were describing began to genuinely intrigue me, and so I decided to give the game another chance, and watch Jacksepticeye's videos in Undertale. Once he had finished the initial pacifist route, I realised why so many people were utterly enthralled by the game, even more so after I'd finally played it for myself in December of 2017. Undertale has married music, gameplay and narrative so deftly that to take one piece out would completely ruin the charm of the game, and I believe that was the intention of Toby Fox, which, in my eyes, made it so much more inspiring. What other game utilises standard game mechanics such as saving and loading, EXP, LV and turns them into central plot points? On the surface, Undertale seems like a fairly standard RPG, with its minimalistic sprite art and its befitting soundtrack. But as you take a closer look, it becomes clear how amazing this game was, and still is, as the quality of the game has not dropped whatsoever. One of the main appeals of music, I find personally, is its ability to incite emotion, and Toby Fox's ability to do this on his own, bar at least one song I believe, is absolutely inspiring, and certainly began my aspirations as a composer, if you will, for video games and cinema, which is, incidentally, the career path I'd like to pursue in the future. The soundtrack of Undertale consists of 101 pieces, each fitting to characters, places, themes, and, consistently, all three at once. Indeed, Toby's heavy use of leitmotifs are, in my opinion, what really put the soundtrack above many others. I consider it to be my favourite soundtrack of all time, with Morrowind's a fairly close second. The leitmotif in Undertale is not only intrinsic to the game musically, but narratively as well, as these leitmotifs are often used to highlight the relationship between places, characters and themes. For example, Asgore's theme when in battle, Bergentrucken, I'm sure I pronounced that wrong, shares a melody with Toriel's battle theme, Heartache, which can be interpreted as the two formally sharing a bond as they were both married. Another example of Fox's use of the leitmotif can be seen with the track Ruins, which shares a melody with two of Undyne's themes, Spear of Justice and Battle Against a True Hero. Though, to be honest, I'm unsure of the connection. Perhaps it refers to Undyne being the protector of the underground. By far, my favourite piece in Undertale is the aptly titled piece, well, Undertale. Though any piece containing the his theme like motif is instantly a favourite of mine, this track in particular is far more effective, I believe, personally, in terms of tone, emotive effect and general quality, as the piece decides to stray from its usual 8-bit style in favour of a more acoustic, instrumental ensemble, with its soft guitar played by Stephanie McIntyre being the only instrument in the soundtrack besides the piano solo in Last Goodbye that was recorded live and not created using FL Studio. This creates a very different feel to the piece and sets it apart from the rest of the soundtrack, the piece begins when the player enters new home and is fast approaching the culmination of their journey, namely encountering King Asgore Dreamer, who, up until he is met, is portrayed by other characters as an immensely powerful and dangerous boss monster who is baying for your blood, or rather soul. I mean, even the test suggests this, highlighting his name in large red capital letters. And, to escape the underground, you are told that you must kill him and take his soul, as the soul of a boss monster does not immediately dissipate following their death. I believe that the track is indeed far more poignant to players undertaking the pacifist route in this respect as it propagates uncertainty and makes you question whether Undertale can be played without killing at all, as this plot point seems wholly set in stone at this point, in that you must kill Asgore to escape, lest he reap your soul, and so this proverbial choice morphs into more of an ultimatum. You want to complete the game, but you also want to complete the pacifist route, and with all the notes and details around Asgore's home completely subverting the idea that he is entirely immoral, you're unsure of whether he deserves death, which is furthered by the monster's retelling of Asriel and the fallen human Kara's story, and the effect that it had on their parents, Asgore and Toriel. And so this allows you to at least understand the reasons the king is so willing to kill, however unnecessary, 
and in turn humanises them, for lack of a better word, I suppose. And of course, the piece itself also seems to present the same conflict, as it blurs the lines between joyfulness and sorrow, hope and hopelessness, with its somewhat solemn acoustic guitar later accompanied by a piano playing the main menu theme, which is, in itself is an active and fairly upbeat little melody, though when coupled with the guitar creates the dichotomy, the uncertainty, directly mirroring the player's own thoughts in musical form. Approximately 2 minutes and 46 seconds in, a flute enters, which transitions the piece fairly suddenly into a more simple, and again, more acoustic theme, with the flute and guitar solely present, it depresenting a more mournful tone. Later, however, the piece resumes its height, if you will, and introduces even more instruments, further altering the mood, and eventually changes key, in which it remains until its end, with the main Azrael or his theme-like motif reoccurring with an instrument akin to a glockenspiel playing the melody. Then it simply trails off and ends. This light motif, you realise, has been featured before, within a statue in which a music box plays the piece Memory, which consists of nothing other than this melody. What I believe to be so significant with the piece on a whole, or rather all of the pieces with that particular light motif, is that they all serve to build from one another, altered drastically to fit certain moods and emotions. The first instance of this light motif is in Waterfall, in the aforementioned statue. It should be noted that the piece only begins if the player is to place an umbrella over the statue's head to stop the water from dripping on it. The second instance is in the piece Undertale, of which I've already covered. And, whilst the track The Choice does contain the leitmotif, it is entirely imperceptible as the piece is simply the latter part of Undertale, vastly slowed down. But even then, it highlights that the leitmotif is present during moments of plot significance, playing where Sands judges the protagonist's actions, during Asgore's speech at the end of his battle, and when Sans seemingly spares you during his battle. Well, we all know how that one turns out. Finally, the leitmotif is featured when the player meets Asriel, during the final part of the fight following a flashback of the first human. The piece, his theme, is a heavily orchestral rendition of the leitmotif, which, similarly to Undertale, presents itself with a mixed range of emotion. Though, the piece does this without any drastic change in tone, and is fairly consistent throughout, and admirably still features this contrast, namely a mix of both hope and sadness, exemplified by the almost military-esque march at the 1 minute 4 second mark, giving the piece the feeling of progression, of determination. When I began playing the piano, in early to mid-2015, I didn't really have much to play piecewise, beginning with Morrowind. I eventually transitioned onto bigger and better things, onto pieces from Undertale, so enamoured by the soundtrack, so in love with all the pieces was I, I simply had to learn more of the complex ones. And I think the earliest thing that I genuinely felt was an accomplished rendition of an Undertale piece was Once Upon a Time, the place during the opening narration of the game. Now, it wasn't the first piece featured on my channel, but it was certainly the first piece I actually felt proud of learning through Synthesia, as I could not, and still fail, to read sheet music. Though of the alternatives nowadays, coupled with the satisfaction of learning and tailoring a piece to fit me, I believe that whilst useful it is personally mostly secondary. And so began my focus on learning pieces from Undertale, and occasionally things from other games in popular culture. And I found the more I worked on these pieces, the better I was becoming as a pianist in return. And to that end, better at composing my own small pieces. I still have a very long way to go, but I owe my initial progress to Undertale's phenomenal soundtrack. Interestingly, this way of progression has become somewhat of a vague double-edged sword for me, as whilst I did indeed progress, I was left with a repertoire that became increasingly less relevant and popular, shall we say, with each passing year. And with Undertale's general opinion now turning more negative due in no small part to the fandom's rather unpleasant vocal minority, I'm left to wonder, have I done enough, Undertale? Ironically, the same conflicts of themes and emotions that are present within the game's more prominent tracks are now present within me. I still love the game to bits. Every aspect, the soundtrack, characters, plot, of which I'm a stick for. But I have to ask myself whether it's time to move on to other pieces. Then again, there's always room to improve the pieces I've already learnt. So I ask you this. Is it better to continuously improve a piece of work until it becomes as good as it possibly can be? Or is it better to simply move on, knowing that you could have done so much more to improve? Or, is there another option? Regardless, Undertale is sure to become a timeless classic, or at least a cult classic due to its humour, 
excellent narrative, phenomenal soundtrack, enjoyable gameplay, deep and diverse characters. And finally, its uncanny ability to completely flip things on its head, subverting your expectations, grasping them with a firm hand, and then thoroughly destroying them with all the might of a really pissed off rhino. One thing's for certain, it's changed me for sure.